Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to stick to Japan and we're going to return to one of my favourite craft breweries here and I would also say that these guys are one of the more prolific ones that you're going to come across in the country. So for this review then we are going to return to Mia Prefecture and we're having a taste of another beer from Isa Kadoya Brewery. This one is one of their winter releases this year in 2019, the 8 Reindeers IPA which comes in at 6% ABV and it is a Belgian style IPA. So I got this one once again at liquor shop Asahiya in Taishibashi Yamaichi here in Osaka and uh, Koji there gets pretty much all of the different Isakadoya beers so this is one that really just piqued my interest I think it was four different ones he had at the time and um, you don't see too many Belgian IPAs around actually and that was the main reason that I picked this one so I've not reviewed this style in quite a little while actually um, but it uses their own house yeast and apparently it's got eight different hops in it as well so that makes it an extra interesting review but I would say that this brewery are very good when it comes to New England IPAs, also West Coast IPAs, but they're not scared to try different styles either, so you can find quite a lot of really interesting things from these guys actually. So if you get the chance to try some of their beers, I highly recommend that you do. I've had many good experiences with Isa Kadoya before. This must be review number seven or eight from these guys on the channel now actually, but I always make sure I review one of their beers when I make it to Japan, and hopefully I can get up and film a little out and about video at their brewery tap room at some point that's definitely one for the future but really looking forward to trying this one as always and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on it so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Isakadoya before if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Japanese beers that I've reviewed for you. That's being added to whenever I get the opportunity. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely, hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Isakadoya then, on to my brewery notes. So Isakadoya, as I've told you before, and as the name suggests, are from Isa City in Mia Prefecture in the Kansai region of Japan. A little bit kind of to the northeast of me here in Osaka. Um, but the this city is dubbed the holy city of the Shinto religion and Shinto to be honest with you a lot of it is about you know taking wisdom from your ancestors and respecting nature and stuff like this but the city itself is all uh, is is it's got like 200 or so different Shinto shrines in it and notably it's the home of the Isa Grand Shrine as well which is the biggest one in Japan from what I understand but the city apparently gets about 5 million visitors per year but it's a relatively small city in you know terms for Japan actually of only 130,000 people but this brewery is one of the other ones that popped up around the uh, the time of the liberalization of the alcohol laws so it was founded back in 1997 and it's owned by Narihiro Suzuki who had previously studied microbiology at university so he runs the company with his wife Chika Suzuki who does a lot of work in the company's restaurants. So the roots of the Suzuki's family business go back to 1575, so a very, very old company. But this was when his family started the Kadoya Cafe with the aim of selling the Kinakomachi tea to the Isa pilgrims. So the full company name is Nikinjaya Mochi Kadoya Honten, if I've pronounced that correctly, and apparently this is one of the longest running companies that is still going in Japan. But in the early days the company struggled when the Jibiru boom kind of bust, if you like, at the, which was at the end of the 1990s. And uh, Narihiro took a gamble and started producing special Shinto beers as a sort of souvenir, and this was what really kept the company afloat during the difficult times. And it was only in 2010 that the Iso Kadoya beer, Isa Kadoya beer started to outperform the uh, the Shinto souvenir beers that they were selling. So the brewmaster at the brewery is Masakazu Nakanishi who joined the company back in 1997 after working in an office job. He had apparently studied fermentation in high school during his agriculture classes, but the brewery apparently were looking for a brewer when his work contract finished, so it just kind of happened by chance for him, and now he's one of the most respected brewers in Japan. But he later became a brewmaster in 1999, and another instrumental man at the brewery is Yoshihiro Matsuoka, who is the restaurant manager and also the label designer for the brewery too, and he's known as the walking beer dictionary because apparently he's just got 
a ridiculous knowledge of all things beer. So yeah, definitely would like to meet that guy, but I don't know if he would uh, if he speaks English or not. We'll need to find that out when we do make it up to Isakada. Yeah, but the brewery import various hops and malts from across the world. They use water from the local Miyagawa River, which is filtered through charcoal filters to clean it up for the beer. And they're apparently very thorough in their quality control as well. And they've won many awards for the different beers that they've produced to date. But the brewery own two restaurants. This is the Biagura, which is the on-site restaurant, and also the Isakadia Kaikumayatin, if I'm pronouncing that correctly again. They've got a core range of beers and various seasonal beers. They also produce cider, soy sauce, tamari, miso paste, and also the Kina Komachi tea that they sell to the pilgrims as well. And in 2018, they moved their beer production to a new brewery, which is where they've got a little tap room and things that you can go and visit. So hopefully I can get up to Isa and visit that for you. It would be awesome to go up there and film a little... Uh you know, and, f and film one of the my little out and about videos for you. It'd be really cool to do that. I've got a few ones that I'd like to do. Shiga Kogan is the other one, Isakado, yeah, and uh, it'd be cool to go to Fuji Zakura as well. These guys are three of the older um, generation of Japanese craft beer, beer breweries, if you can say that. I mean, they're only 20 years old, but they are kind of three of the, the pillars, if you like, of Japanese craft beer. There are new ones that have popped up since then, but definitely a brewery that I want to go and have a little look at. But um, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Isakadoya for the moment. Isa is supposed to be a very beautiful city. It's somewhere that's been on my list for a while, so I'll need to make that happen at some point soon. It'd be awesome to go up and visit it, but um, yeah, make sure you try some of these beers if you get the chance. But let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself. Then, if you want to learn more about the brewery, brewery website's in the description below, and uh, you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can check out the Rate Beer and Untapped pages to see all the different beers that they've produced as well. But um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this beer then. So just to tell you a few things about this one, first it tells you on the side in Japanese, so I've had to type this out in English so that. I can read it to you. Um, the hops in this one, the eight varieties of hops that are in here are Chinook, El Dorado, Cascade, Glacier, Amarillo, Centennial, Cluster and Mosaic. Most of those hops I've heard of, but Glacier and Cluster were new ones for me. So a little bit about Glacier. This was developed back in 2000 in Washington State on the West Coast in America. It's apparently known for being quite a herbal and woody. Uh, flavoured hop. Cluster is one that I'm surprised I'd never heard of. When I did the research on it, apparently this is a very, very old uh, American hop and at the turn of the 20th century, around 95 or so percent of uh, the hops grown in America were cluster hops and it was very popular up until the 1970s, which I guess is when Cascade started to become popular, or maybe that was the 80s. Um, but this is known for being quite an earthy uh, floral and citrusy hop. Both of those two hops actually are known for being quite citrusy. But the other interesting thing about this beer is also that um it's got their, it's got its own yeast uh, isakadia's own yeast, yeah, yeast strain and i can't speak in this video which is called uh cad it's called isakadia ichi basically isakadia number one so um yeah cool to see that they're developing their own yeast strains and stuff like that now i think we've got some interesting times around the corner at uh, Isakado, yeah. but obviously the eight hops they've put in this is to kind of symbolise Santa's eight reindeer and you can see that Santa's sleigh being uh, drawn by eight different hop flowers there but you know really really nicely presented uh, beer this one it's almost um, the label of this one is kind of like the top of some of these Shinto shrines that you see the general rule in Japan for those of you watching outside if it's a temple it's Buddhist if it's a shrine it is Shinto that's the general thing here but that kind of bit that it, to that it tells you there that's the stuff that I read out to you. That's just kind of what it says on the side of the bottle there in Japanese. But kanji, of course, as I've told you, is not my strong point. Hiragana and katagana is fine. Still working on the kanji. There you can see the lovely, distinctive, bright green Isakadia bottle cap. So without further ado, let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then. A 6% Belgian style IPA. And I think, if memory serves me correctly, this one may well be the first Belgian IPA that I've had from Japan. Really not sure about that actually. But it's a style that, as I say, that I've always enjoyed. The Belgisk IPA from Hamburg Elliot up in uh, Dramen, if I remember rightly, in Norway. That's one of the best ones I've ever reviewed actually, but it's a little bit difficult to get these days come to think of it but um yeah this looks really really quite nice so um yeah it's a lot darker than i was expecting it would be this one 
looks almost like a West Coast double IP or something like that. It's got a lovely kind of rich amber colour to it. You can see there's a solid finger of a frothy, kind of cream, very light, almost ivory coloured head actually. It's a really nice looking beer this. I would, you know, if I was looking at this I probably wouldn't think this is a Belgian IP. I mean, in my experience Belgian IPs are usually a bit brighter than this. Uh, and also a little bit more hazy as well. Belgian beer, of course, is all about the yeast. This one looks as if, if you put the light through it, it looks as if it's been filtered a little bit, but I'm not quite sure about that. I mean, it's not crystal clear, but it's not the haziest of the Belgian IPAs that I've come across. But colour isn't a big deal, to be honest with you. As long as the flavours and stuff are right, um, it should be, it'll, it'll be very good. And knowing this brewery, I'm pretty sure that this will be a damn nice beer. But if I hold my fingers behind the glass, uh, I'm not sure how well you can see it on the camera, but there is a degree of transparency to this one. So a lovely sort of coppery amber colour and a nice finger of a frothy kind of light fawn, colored, fawn sort of ivory coloured head, I guess you could say. Uh, one or two big bubbles of carbonation, most of it kind of filtering up towards the bottom of that head there. But let's have a look at the aroma then and just see how we get on. So, yeah. That comes across really nicely, actually. I mean, come to think of it, I'd be guessing that those two hops that I mentioned, the Glacier and the, um, the Cluster, I think they're being used as bittering hops in this. Um, because it's... You know, it really does have this kind of big herbal and woody undertone to it. I mean, it's it's really interesting. This is one of the reasons why I really enjoy reviewing Izakadoya's beers because they always, um, you know, they always throw up some some really interesting things. And that the hoppy notes in this one, those are what jump out at you straight away. Um, so yeah, that that kind of woody note that I was talking about was that the glacier, I think. The woody quality from the glacier, I think, really shines through in this one. And the kind of herbal qualities to this beer as well are really interesting. It's it's a bit kind of brighter than you expect. I always describe English hops as being um, as being quite herbal, but the the herbal qualities in this one are really really quite nice actually, and you can really smell that just underpinning the whole beer. I really like that about this. Um, but of course that kind of mixes in with the, the sort of malty and yeasty qualities that the beer has. So you can definitely pick up a little bit of that nice kind of bready doughy thing and um, that you would expect of a sort of Belgian type yeast and um, it's definitely not as prominent as you might come across in say a triple or a Belgian blonde or something like that obviously I think the Belgian IPAs tend to use a yeast that's more akin to those rather than a quad or a trip uh, a quad or a, a brune or something like that um, but yeah it's got that lovely kind of white bready doughy kind of thing to it it's got a little bit of an almost kind of candy bubblegum note as well. Some biscuit, some, uh, I don't know if it's quite caramel. I think it's more of a sweet kind of biscuity note. Yeah, definitely more biscuity than caramel, to be honest with you. But that really mixes in well with the woody, herbally notes that you're getting from the hops of this. So I have to say, that's a really good choice, actually. I mean, uh, you know, I wouldn't, uh, as a home brewer, I mean, I know quite a few of the hops and things like that from, uh, you know, just from from having homebrewed and things a few times and from doing these beer videos, but Glacier and Cluster I would never have heard of, so it's kind of crazy to find uh, a Japanese brewery using these sort of things, but you know, they are very kind of innovative over here, so in some ways it's surprising, in some ways it's not. Um, but yeah, this one comes across really, really nicely. Um, the under, the whole underpinning of this beer is just lovely, so thumbs up to Isakadoya for the... Uh, the kind of malty and hair, just the aroma in this beer is lovely. Take a bit of time to enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck in. Yeah, lovely stuff. So yeah, on the green side of the hops then, definitely quite grassy. As I said to you already, there's a little bit of floral quality in there. It's not quite piney. You might expect when there's Chinook involved, you might get a good bit of pine resin. But to me, this is quite a nice kind of um, grassy and herbal beer in terms of the green side of things. The fruity side is really interesting. I mean, there's a good little bit of a kind of um, grapefruity, passion fruity note to this one, but it's not quite as pronounced as you might get from, say, a New England IP. It's a little bit more oily and reserved. You can definitely pick up some of the orangey notes from the mosaic as well, that sort of tangerine orange. The centennial, I think, is the one that's giving you 
that nice kind of lemony quality, a little bit of the kind of more tropically passion fruity notes that will be coming from the um, from the El Dorado. The Cascade will give you that sort of slightly grapefruity note, but also there's a wee bit of a kind of red fruity thing going on in this one too. But this one, the aroma's got quite a lot going on in it. Don't linger over it too much as I've done. Um, just appreciate it for what it is because it's a really interesting one actually. So lots of different fruits going on in this one. It's almost a little bit like jammier. Something like that. It's like a mixed berry jam in some ways, but you've got a little bit of a marmalade and kind of tropical note in there as well, actually. So, a really interesting aroma on this one. Take a bit of time to enjoy that, but um, let's have a taste of this beer now and just see how we get on. This one is the Eight Reindeers IPA, a Belgian style IPA coming in at 6% ABV from Isekado Brewery in Ise Mia, Japan. Let's get stuck into this one. Merry Christmas once again, since this is a Christmas beer. Slanger, Skull, Kampai. That's pretty nice actually. It's, it's different. It really is quite different, but it works really well. I mean, in some ways, first impression, is that in some ways this beer is pretty old school but and that's the way the kind of hoppy bitterness comes out in this one but in other ways it's really it's almost a little bit English it's almost a bit like a kind of English a modern take on an English IPA in some ways but then in the aftertaste you start to get the more kind of yeasty qualities that you'd expect of them um, of a Belgian IPA this is a really interesting one actually it reminds me of one or two of the beers that I've had from the likes of uh, Brauerei de Ranke as well in Belgium um, there was it the double X? It reminds me of that actually and it's also got a little bit of kind of Brussels beer project to it as well which is kind of interesting so if you like those two breweries Brauerei de Ranke or um, Brussels beer project there's probably other ones you can compare it to as well but I think you will quite appreciate this one So yeah, let's try and break this down then. So, middle of your palate, I find, is, is really interesting in this one. So, you can feel that there's a sort of woody note to this. That just blankets the middle of the palate. And on top of that, you start to get this grainy, doughy kind of thing out of it. And I'm guessing that's their own yeast that they've used. Because you can really feel that it, it's almost woody, the grainy kind of notes almost sit on top of it and then in the very centre of your palate there's a little bit of a sweet kind of caramelly note and as you move further out from the centre of the palate it becomes that little bit more sort of biscuity which is really interesting as well um, it's it's a very unusual beer this one, it takes your, yeah, a little bit of time just to get your head around it but it's certainly very good quality actually and I wouldn't expect anything less from Isakado yeah. Yeah, um, I'm finding the, the green side of the hops is really interesting in this as well. Back corners of the palate, you've definitely got a little bit of earthiness in there. I'm guessing that'll be the cluster. But then as you move further forward from that, it develops to be a little bit more kind of herbal and things. And I suspect that probably um, the Chinook, the, um, the Chinook, the cluster and the glacier, I suspect those are being used as bittering hops and the other ones are being added a little bit later in the brew. Because as you come further forward, you get a bit more of a herbal quality. It becomes a little bit more kind of floral uh, and almost piney actually on the front corners of the palate. Then around the very front curve of the tongue, it's just that little bit more kind of light and uh, and grassy. Behind the front curve of the palate, of course, that's where you get that oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters start to come out of the beer. And again, there's quite a bit going on with this one. So yeah, if you go towards the back of that oily bubble, there's a bit of that darker grapefruit in there, which will be the Cascade, and you know the Chinook will give you some of that as well. And as you come further forward, you get a little bit more of that kind of passion fruity kind of note coming out of it. That will be the El Dorado. It starts to get a little bit more kind of juicy as you move further forward. It quite quickly moves 
toward being a little bit more orangey and lemony right on the front of the palette. So you get the Centennial in there, you get the um, you get the nice kind of orangey tangerine notes, and that's from the uh, the mosaic that's in here. The mosaic gives you a lovely sort of um, it'll give you a lovely kind of tangerine note. I think there's I think they said there was amarillo in this one as well actually and the amarillo will give you more kind of oily orange. You can feel um, both of them in there. So let me just see if I remember in the hops. So you've got cluster, um, glacier, there was um, Chinook, Centennial, Mosaic, Cascade, Amarillo and El Dorado. I think those are the, the ones in there. But um, I think I've got all eight. So you can detect things from all of the different hops in this one. The woody elements, I'm finding that that comes out a little bit on the edge of the palette too, the further into the the taste that you go. But um, it's it's a really kind of interesting beer, this one. It does remind me a little bit of the likes of Braurai de Ranca, as I said, or some of the stuff that you're going to find from Brussels Beer Project. It's got a little bit more of a kind of yeasty presence. And I think the woody elements from the... Um, the woody and kind of herbal elements that you get from the glacier and the cluster, which as I say are new hops to me, they really complement that quite well actually. So I don't know if those other two breweries that I mentioned are using those in their beers. Hmm. But this is a really, really solid beer from, from Isakadu. I really um, I'm not sure what this one kind of has to do with Christmas, right enough, to be honest. I don't know why they would release a Belgian IPA as one of their Christmas beers, but I mean, regardless, it's a really quite nice beer, actually, um, and, you know, if you get the chance to try it, I recommend that you do it. As I say, this is one of the great things about Isakadi, or they're not scared to have a go and try different things, and I think this one's turned out pretty nicely. Is it my favourite beer that I've had from Isakadi, yeah? Um, I mean, the Imperial Red and the Neko Nihiki, which they did with Culmination Brewing in Oregon. Those are probably the two, my two favourites that I've had. I'm not sure this one quite tops that, but this is probably the most kind of quirky one that I've had from them so far. So take that as you might. This is a really, it's a really solid Belgian IPA, not quite as bready and um, yeasty as you might expect compared to some, not the sweetest of uh, Belgian IPAs that you're going to come across either, but it's a really solid effort of this, uh, or a solid take on this style in my opinion, and you can't really ask for much more than that. You're not going to find this style too often in Japan, um, or indeed anywhere else now. But in terms of the, the mouthfeel then, I would say this beer is... It's at the light, it's the lighter end of mid-bodied. Carbonation is really smooth. The mouthfeel overall it's quite clean, but at the same time, it's got a little bit of an oily character, and then it, the oiliness comes out a little bit later on in this one. There's a good little bit of hoppy bitterness here. I wouldn't be surprised if this one's kind of around the 60 or 70 IBU mark. It could even be a little bit higher than that, to be honest. The Chinook really starts to, in the aftertaste, you really start to get some of the piney resins and some of the herbal and earthy qualities. Those start to kind of you know, just buzz around a little bit more on the side of the palate later on. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a fairly high IBU to this one, um, but it's got a lovely oily, juicy, fruity character, and the malt base, the, the kind of woody underline of the malt base, that starts to sweeten up a little bit the further you go into the aftertaste. And some of the, the caramelly notes, uh, well, as I say, it was more McVitie's digestive biscuit, it was more like that, but it does start to evolve to be a little bit more kind of caramelly the further you go into the aftertaste as well. But definitely a really interesting beer from Isakadoya, and this is one of the reasons why I always recommend that you try their beers if you're interested in Japanese stuff. So um, yeah, let's just leave it at that for this one. This is the Eight Reindeers IPA, a Belgian style IPA coming in at 6% ABV, eight different hops, and uh, Isakadoya's own yeast strain in this one which turned out pretty nice I have to say so definitely need to keep an eye on these guys for more of their own yeast strains and beers and stuff like that over the next while but cool to try this one interesting to try one of their winter beers at last as well so I hope that you guys have enjoyed my take on this too so um, yeah thank you for watching and once again um, do check out all my playlists and stuff like that of beers from different countries make sure you check out my other beer reviews from East Academy as well let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below let me know what your favourite beers are from East Academy too 
and I'm sure we'll be returning to these guys at some point in the fairly near future. One of my favourite Japanese craft breweries and one of the more prolific ones that you're going to find over here. And like I say, hopefully we can do a little out and about review at some point soon. But this one was the Eight Reindeers IPA, a 6% Belgian style IPA from Isakadoya in Isa Mia Prefecture here in Japan. Until the next time, slander just now and I'll catch you guys later. Slanger, Skull, Kampai.